This video is brought to you by Skillshare. Well, it is August 1st, which means it is back to school time. And for the first time in my life, I'm actually excited because I get to relearn how to interact with people and hopefully be on campus. But with that said, now that we're gonna be out of the house, um, having a portable device is now more warranted. And whether you own an iPad or you're thinking about getting one today, I thought I would sort of showcase the lineup that Apple has right now, uh, along with some alternatives in order to help you decide which iPad suits you best as of fall 2021 for your student needs. I also wanna acknowledge that a lot of you ask me direct questions as to what iPad or setup you should buy, whether it's in YouTube comments, Instagram DMs or emails. And you know, the, the fact is I cannot possibly respond to all of them and I apologize for that as much as I would like to. I read as many comments as I can, but I wanna make you aware that I can now respond to you in a more personal way on Amazon Live. I will be streaming there uh, in August and into September, maybe even after that. So I'll leave a link to my storefront so you can ask me specific questions and I can hopefully give you specific personal answers. So first up, let's talk about the cheapest new iPad you can get. And of course, that is the iPad 8th gen. This is a hell of a value, I have to say. It's not the most perfect device. It's not the most modern device, but it gets the job done and it gets it done very well. I mean, like most iPad needs, I would say 85% of them are covered by this tablet. It's big enough for note taking with the Apple Pencil. It's big enough to do actual work with, and it's small enough to carry in a bag and be more portable. And the A12 on the inside is more than capable of running everything you need to do from web surfing to, you know, even some light gaming. So if you want to get into the iPad ecosystem or just the iPad, you know, workflow in general, whether you want to take notes with good notes or notability or whatnot, this is the iPad to start with if you're not totally sure you want to spend a bunch of money on, for example, an iPad Air or an iPad Pro. And it's always on sale too, whether on Amazon or Best Buy or Staples or wherever you decide to buy you know, from a third party besides Apple. Um, it's always below MSRP, so I'm sure you can snag a great deal on it. And it's gonna get cheaper once the ninth gen comes out this fall. I wanna make you aware that Apple might be updating this iPad to look more like the iPad Air 3 um, with a slimmer chassis, albeit it's probably gonna have the same processor on the inside, maybe the A14. And speaking of the iPad Air 3, it is also a great alternative here once again, it's slimmer, it's sleeker, it has the same processor. It's basically the same tablet with a better chassis and a better display. And as you can see here, I have a pretty nifty screen protector from Paperlike installed, which makes just note taking, handwriting, and any you know um, Apple Pencil related tasks so much better. I was a big pen and pencil person, so switching to digital kind of was a bit daunting. But once I had this on here, you got this familiar feel, or I got this familiar feel, which makes note taking and just jotting stuff down with the pencil so much more engaging. And I'll leave a link to this screen protector in the video description if you purchase one through me. It does help the channel out as well. But yeah, you can find this tablet um, for maybe a little more than this used, albeit once again, it is slimmer, it is nicer. Um, although the ninth gen is likely to look like this. So stay tuned or stay you know, ready for that. Um, and watch for this tablet, the eighth gen, to drop in price as well. It's still gonna be a great value even after the next gen comes out. Next up, let's talk about the iPad mini. And this is a device that will always have a special place in my heart. You can fit it in your back pocket. It's super portable. It's cute. You know, you were, like I like remember the ads from back in the day with the piano and stuff. Like this is a very endearing, very Apple, very iconic device. The issue is, is that it is small. And even though I have demoed in the past that you can do some note taking with this, you can jot some stuff down with the Apple Pencil. It is compatible after all. It's basically the iPad Air 3, but shrunk without the smart connector. Um, I wouldn't recommend it for any major work. It's just too small. If you wanna have something like a planner or a companion to your MacBook or a Windows laptop, then by all means consider this. And also know that Apple's probably gonna come out with a newer generation one with iPad Pro-like looks, or at the very worst, just a new processor. So stay tuned for that as well. But yeah, this is more of a companion device. It's also great for gaming because you get the A12 chip on the inside, which is more than capable of pushing most modern games. And you just get this really nice form factor, very two-handable, very comfortable form factor to sit down on the couch and game with. You can do some light reading as well. So I would say if you are buying this for school, know that it's okay for jotting some stuff down with a pencil, but I recommend it more for like reading, light web surfing, and just as a companion device 
to a laptop. So not necessarily a device you want to get down into the nitty gritty with, with note taking. I'm sure people do. I don't want to criticize people who do. If you can figure it out, by all means, buy this device, go to the store, see how big it is. But I would say though, you're better off working with at least a 9.7 inch display or better yet a 10.5 inch or a 10.9 inch display with the iPad Air 4, which is our next you know, topic of discussion. But before we touch on the iPad Air 4, I wanna briefly mention today's video sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creators. You can explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. I'm sure a lot of you would enjoy Marcus Brownlee's YouTube success Skillshare course. I've actually been meaning to look at that. And there's also so many different creative categories to choose from as well, like UX, UI, design, and music production. As a current business student, I'm also keen on checking out their marketing-oriented courses as well. Regardless of what you study, Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they always are launching new premium classes. So you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. And what's really cool is that the first thousand people to click my link in the video description will get a free month of Skillshare Premium so they can explore their creativity as well. All right, moving on to the more bougie iPad, starting with the iPad Air 4. This thing got the iPad Pro treatment, as you remember, back in 2020. And this thing really is student-oriented. Apple is marketing this as a fun iPad, a cheaper alternative to the Pro, great for students. And I think it is too. It has the you know iPad Pro-like design once again, which accommodates the magnetic uh, Apple Pencil second gen. It has a full screen display, no home button, just like a lot of students' iPhones. A lot of people in the States at least have the iPhone XR and the iPhone 11. So it's a similar experience. And yeah, it is a fantastic tablet. Apple is also running a promo where they're selling this for $50 under their MSRP with education pricing. And you get free AirPods as well. And by the way, if you think about it, if you decide not to return this, you can sell your AirPods for like, you know, 75 to hundred dollars and then deduct that from the cost of this. So you're going to get it for like maybe a hundred dollars cheaper at the end of the day. So some, that's something to think about. Um, but yeah, this is a fantastic device. I reviewed it back in October and it's more than powerful enough for what you want to do within good notes and web surfing and stuff. It's also good for some heavy gaming and some video editing as well. The A14 is very, very capable. Um, so this is definitely overkill. I would say the eighth gen is still a great value, but this is definitely more sleek and if you are into the iPad Pro, but you don't necessarily need all the bells and whistles, by all means, find this for a good price. Maybe discount it off Amazon or off Best Buy. Or if you want the free AirPods, go on Apple's website, get education pricing, and give this tablet a go. It's great. I'll leave a link to my um, review in the video description. I also did a comparison between this and the Pro, which I'm going to talk about next. Oh, and real quick, there might be an iPad Air 5 this year. I mean, we did see the iPad Air refreshed in 2019 and then in 2020, so it's safe to say that Apple might be putting an A15 in the next gen one and a, an ultra wide camera, no LiDAR. That's what I've heard in the news. So be aware of that. This might also come down in price and still be a fantastic value. I mean, I think that the last gen iPad Pros are also a fantastic value. The next gen one will just be an update for people who have like the iPad Air 3, for example. You know, people usually update in a sort of staggered way, especially with iPhones. You know, people with the iPhone 11 are probably waiting for the iPhone 13, for example. So um, be aware of that. Maybe wait on that if you don't need an iPad right away way. Just wait for the new one to come out to see if this one comes down in price or consider the iPad Air 5 if you really want a new tablet or if you're coming from an older one. But this is going to be great for a while. If Apple didn't update this for a while, I wouldn't be upset because it has a lot of longevity in terms of the hardware on the inside and the design. It's just a solid tablet. Um, something I also want to talk about is an alternative to this. If you can find an iPad Pro 11 inch from 2018 for a similar price, honestly, if you're not bothered by worse battery life and you really like 120 hertz refresh, rate. This thing is a beast still, even though it came out almost at this point three years ago. This thing has a lot of longevity as well. The A12X on the inside performs a little better in multi-core scores or heavier tasks than the A14 and a little worse in everyday tasks or single core scores if you know what I'm talking about. But yeah, this is a great tablet as well. It will have a bit of a degraded battery if you buy it third party or off eBay or whatever, but it is something to consider as well. And if you can find this sealed for a similar price around like maybe 550, which is what this goes for, um, by all means go for that. But the Air 4 is also a great device as well and will last you a little longer battery wise because it does have a more efficient processor and a you know more efficient display 60 hertz compared to 120 hertz so be aware of that as well and finally let's touch on the device that everybody loves but not everybody needs the ipad pro and i daily drive a 12.9 inch with the m1 chip and 16 gigs of ram do i need it for what i do 
Absolutely not, but I love being on the bleeding edge of tech. And if you are the same way, then spend your money. It is a fantastic device. It has the 120 hertz ProMotion display. Of course, it comes in this bigger size with this fabulous new display in the M1 variants at least. And so much RAM, just so much longevity, so much power. Um, but the, you know, the, the issue is, do you need it? And honestly, if I wasn't into tech, I would have been fine rocking a 2018 12.9 inch for the next like two years, even after the release of the 2021 iPad Pros, because what I'm doing is not that intensive. Um, because like good notes, for example, doesn't require a processor that's almost as powerful as some core i9 chips. Like you don't need that. The A12 is enough for that. So, you know, it's definitely overkill, but it is a fantastic device that will last you. I mean, years to come, even in the 11 inch, of course, it comes with the same fantastic M1 processor, even the A12X and Z variants. I'm like, I have right here with this 2018 iPad Pro. They're still fine. They'll be fine for the next like three years. I mean, Apple supports like the iPad Air 2 that came out when I was like 14 years old. So like, you know, that's a long time. So Apple is really, really good with keeping their iPads supported and Apple Silicon ages really, really well. So, you know, if you want, again, to be on the bleeding edge of tech, by all means, if you want the bigger size, go for the iPad Pro, although I recommend going in person, maybe to Best Buy or the Apple Store to make sure you know what you're getting and then maybe, and then maybe snagging a better deal you know, at a third party like Best Buy or Amazon, especially if you're watching my live streams that I'm gonna be doing. And also too, if you know you can take advantage of the hardware inside here, if you know you're gonna be doing some rendering, maybe AutoCAD, maybe some video editing, there are very great iPad apps to you know accommodate that kind of workflow, then by all means invest in an M1 iPad Pro or even a last gen iPad Pro. There's still gonna be plenty power you know, don't feel ashamed. Don't feel like you're buying something that's completely overkill. Some people can definitely take advantage of this. I personally am not one of those people because I just use like note taking apps and Notion and productivity apps, but still love the experience on here. Another thing to note is that you have a very powerful camera setup on here with a LiDAR sensor. Now, I don't do anything that requires this, but you can scan rooms and objects and just make these really cool 3D like models within software you can sort of like go through. I don't, I can't name any specific apps, but I've seen it in, in like action and it's pretty cool. Also having an ultra wide camera allows you to take pictures of things pretty up close without having to back up. I can probably demo this here. So here we are at this desk. I can press the point five X button. And as you can see here, I'm really close to this table, but I can get this whole iPad in the shot. And you can imagine that would be really useful when it comes to papers or, you know, being in this sort of cramped room. Having this powerful camera setup is pretty nice, although not necessary. For example, the you know, iPad Air 4's camera setup is perfectly fine. You get a wide angle lens and sensors. Same with the iPad mini, even though, you know, and also the iPad Air, you don't get the best camera, but it's still a camera. You also get a front facing camera as well, like in any other modern device. I don't know why I said that, but you know. <laughs> And when it comes to screen size here, like I have the 11 inch iPad Pro and the 12.9 inch iPad Pro, um, honestly go to the store. I can't necessarily tell you what you need. Although I will say if you are somebody who is always doing note taking like I am, you might sketch and draw, you know, you want a huge canvas, by all means go with the 12.9 inch. If you're not worried about portability, you will not regret getting this at all. Also when you like, you know, have accessories like keyboards, the keyboard is gonna be bigger, more full size. But if you're somebody that really does value portability and you want a smaller, more clipboard or like notebook size device, then by all means buy the 11 inch iPad Pro. It's still plenty big to note take with. I had no problem using this as my first iPad Pro device. Although later on, I did realize that I wanted the 12.9 inch uh, variant. And I'll leave a link to a size guide that I made like a year and a half ago. I still think it's plenty you know, relevant. So you can kind of see where I demo certain apps. Um, I'm not gonna be doing another video like that for a while because the iPad form factor has not changed, but I think that might help. And also going in person might help as well to sort of see how these really do stack up in person. And the last thing I'm gonna recommend is that you don't necessarily need a brand new M1 iPad Pro. I mean, sure, it's a great investment. It's gonna last you forever um, because the M1 chip is like, I think at least one and a half times more powerful than the previous generation processors in iPad Pro. But even those processors like the A12X and my iPad Pro 2018 here are more than enough to do any of the tasks that you require to you know, graduate college or to do college work like open canvas, go on websites, note take, all of that. And it also drives the 120 Hertz displays beautifully, even an A10X and a previous gen iPad Pro, like the 10.5 inch iPad Pro and the chunkier, more, you know, legacy looking iPad Pros. Um, those run just fine too. So, you know, you can also consider those, but yeah, um, what I'm saying is go for a last gen 2020 iPad Pro model. I'd honestly recommend that because it's gonna have the same chip, it's gonna have a dual camera setup, and it's also gonna have a brand new battery on the inside. But by all means, if you do want an 
iPad Pro more on a budget, buy a used one. It'll probably last you decently long. You can always plug in, but you know, also I will say the M1 chip is more efficient, so it will last you a little longer. I've noticed better battery life on these devices compared to my last gen 12.9 inch, but I digress. Um, obviously newer is better, but it's not necessarily necessary for everyone's workflow or most people's workflows, especially if you are a college student. But I don't know everybody's usage case. Once again, you do your own research as well. If you need the M1 chip, by all means buy it. But yeah, that about wraps up this video. Um, it's been nice to do something like this for once. I haven't done sort of a sit down sort of chat style video in a while. And once again, I'm really looking forward to be doing this on Amazon Live. And again, if you end up, you know, asking me a specific question and you know, if I answer your question, you're like, all right, I'm gonna buy this. If you do buy a device on Amazon while I am streaming, it does help the channel out a lot. Um, so yeah, I'll leave a link once again to my storefront in the video description. Also check out my Skillshare link and my paper like link. Once again, those uh, screen protectors or these screen protectors are just so great. I've been using one on my personal iPad Pro for a while and I just love it. It's a must have accessory. And speaking of accessories, I do plan on doing an accessory oriented video for iPad for students. So probably something similar to this. And of course I can answer accessory oriented questions on Amazon Live as well. But yeah, that about wraps things up here. I hope this video was helpful. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to uploading a little bit more. The summer is definitely slow. And I'm the person that doesn't really want to say anything if there isn't anything to say, but I have a lot of content planned, a lot of iPad content and some Mac content as well. And of course, I'm excited to see what Apple comes out with later in the year. Um, so stay tuned for that. And as always, I'm Noah and I will catch you all in the next one.